we love the fact that we can be part of your family there with um, Pastor Jack and the congregation there at Emmanuel Blessings in Sydney. We are greatly blessed by that. And so I'm going to share first and then Norman. So I'll start with a prayer. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you because this is the day that you have made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, I just um, pray for all these precious saints on the Zoom now, Lord, that you would um, help me to open up your word uh, to them that will just be such a blessing to them as they are a blessing to you and a blessing to others, Lord. So I pray that your blessings will flow today. Lord, I pray as I bring the word that it will not fall to the ground without bearing fruit but will accomplish all the purpose for which you have sent it so lord i just pray now that you will just help me to um, minister from your heart to these blessed people of yours thank you for the opportunity lord amen so praise the lord look there are a number of things i wanted to share but we are in the year of 5781 and the first um, Shavuot and obviously the anniversaries of Shavuot are on the 6th of Sivan and we also know that um, Pentecost is the same feast day as uh, Shavuot. So I had a look at the date that Moses received the law on Mount Sinai, the Torah, and uh, it's 1 3 um, 1 2 BC. And so I added on um, the year that we're in now, 2021, and it came up with surprisingly 3 3 3 3. And I thought, wow, how amazing is that! Um, there must be some significance in that and of course we know that um, the the tree represents the trinity father son and holy spirit when we have a look at it it also uh, represents past present future um, body soul spirit um, the the earth the sea the sky and uh, so there are a lot of things that come in threes and uh, birth, life and death, for example. But I think also we know that Jesus or Yeshua, he rose on the third day. And I know that people have spoken of the third day church. I actually believe that we are in the time of the third day church. We are in the time of a revival because when you have a look at what happened at Pentecost, we have Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three in one, working together so that tongues of fire came upon the early church, the 120 gathered in the upper room. It was the birth of the church, it burst revival. 3,000 people came into um, the kingdom of God or became believers in Yeshua. And look at that, that's three multiplied by a thousand, that's another three and so I believe that uh, we're in a, a third wave right now um, and that we're going to see revival very soon and I'm excited about that uh, I, I believe that um, God really wants to pour out his spirit again in signs wonders and miracles like he did in the church in the day of Acts uh, when many were um, added um, to the church so I'm going to come back to that at the end um, what I wanted to have a look at is a little bit of the background of um, Shavuot and Pentecost so we, there was a real showdown between the gods of Egypt and the God of Israel when the Israelites came out of slavery in Egypt into the promised land now, I believe that we're going to be seeing that 
um, we are already seeing that showdown again um, in this day. Um, even in the time of uh, Pentecost, there was a showdown as well, because what we had there was that when Peter and, and John and the other disciples went out preaching um, the word of God, the leaders of the uh, Jewish um, the Jewish council at that particular time were very challenged by their message. Um, they were actually um, quite jealous of the um, following because fairly quickly um, the church grew to 5,000 men. Now, when you add women and children, I think that could come up around about 30,000, so another three there. But look, whether it was close to that or not, the thing is, uh, there was a huge revival. The church was gathering pace and the uh, Jewish religious lead leaders were very threatened by that with their religious spirit um, and jealousy. And so they were planning to kill the disciples. And uh, uh, I'm going to come back to a little bit more of that later. But we, we have that showdown even in the time of Pentecost. We have a showdown today. Um, between um, the, the gods of men, the, uh, the demonic realm, um, and the God of um, Israel um, and his Messiah, Yeshua, who we serve. And uh, so basically what we have is we have the gods of um, humanism, secularism, uh, identity politics, um, political correctness, um, and all of that are, are really challenging. The church is under great challenge um, at this time to stand up for who we are in, in Christ, who we are in Messiah, because somehow I, I was just really getting the sense that as the um, early believers were virtually hiding in fear in the upper room, that much of the church today is hiding um, in their rooms together or separately, but hiding in fear, not being prepared to say, this is who I am, this is what I believe, and I stand or fall on that, but I know that my God's got my back and he will win in the end. So um, I think that's um, important to know that, you know, Mount Sinai was the place where Moses was um, commissioned and I think that's awesome because we come back um, full circle with that. This is the place of the burning bush experience where he was commissioned and then he brings the people back there and this is the place that they receive the Torah, the uh, place where they uh, become really the people of God and a nation set apart to love and serve him. So a very uh, historic event, very important um, spiritually, uh, especially considering that the Jewish people are the mothers and fathers of our faith. Amen. So uh, I believe that this is a time for us to really um, be recommissioned by God. And I would really um, urge you to spend some time with the Lord and say, Lord, what is your plan and purpose for my life? I may not have had a burning bush experience, but I have a sense of what you have called me to do. And um, Lord, I just pray for a fresh commissioning from you and a fresh empowering um, from you um, to fulfill all that you have called me to. And look, how about I just pray that on you now. Lord, I just um, pray, Lord, that you would freshly commission each one here to the plans and purposes that you have for them. Lord, I just pray um, a type of burning bush experience for each one here, even if it's in the night hours on their bed while they're resting, Lord, and you come to them with a, a dream or in the daytime when they're praying and you come to them with a vision, Lord, even just when they're resting in you quietly, I pray, Lord, reawake the fire 
in the people, Lord, and everyone I'm praying for now. Reawake the fire, reawake the sense of purpose, the sense of destiny, and, and recommission your people, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we know that Mount Sinai was uh, seven weeks after um, Passover or Pesach, after they uh, left the slavery in Egypt, and plus one day, which brings it to um, uh, Shavuot, the Greek word uh, Pentecost for 50, um, when the uh, scriptures were translated into Greek. So we know that um, it's a Moedem, a special time, three times a year. Um, the people of God were called to go to um, Jerusalem, Pesach, Shavuot, and then the fall feasts, including uh, Sukkot. So Shavuot means Feast of Weeks, and uh, we know that in uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16, um, 9 to 11, um, it uh, tells people to um, observe the um, Omer and um, count excitedly um, toward um, Shavuot, um, just as the bride would excitedly count down the days from her betrothal to a wedding, because truly um, the it was a wedding on, on Mount Sinai. So there was a um, pilgrimage um, festival, um, basically toward the temple in Jerusalem or Mishkan. Um, the first fruits that people, they called them bikram, they would um, gather the first fruits, tie them up in a ribbon and um, put them on a decorated um, oxen, decorated with flowers. Um, the first fruits were the seven species, so they were wheat, barley, grapes, um, figs, pomegranates, olives and dates. And uh, those who were rich would put them in a gold or silver basket and the um, not so rich would weave a, a wicker basket. But it would just be a joyful procession um, to uh, Jerusalem, a kind of pilgrimage and they'd meet people on the way. And uh, so it was a really joyful um, time. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. Now, a sample of wheat was given to the priest um, and uh, from the first um, uh, fruits. And it was baked as a wave offering before the Lord. And it talks about this in Leviticus 23, 15 to 20. And uh, so I'm just going to just have this wave offering before the Lord now and Lord we just thank you you have given us everything Lord all the provision that you have given us Lord we just thank you as we have this wave offering of the two loaves before you now and we thank you that it prophetically looks forward uh, to the the new man Jew and Gentile um, that you um, talk about um, in Ephesians uh, so we thank you for that Lord amen So we know that after 70 AD, it was uh, difficult for them to be able to continue with um, the harvest festival. And so there was a reconnection with the relationship of Shavuot um, to the giving of the, of the Torah. And uh, I just want to, I shared about this um, with this beautiful Shavuot service we had with Pastor Jack and and uh, international family um, on Tuesday. But I just want to say again, it's just so beautiful that um, Shavuot is really um, a time of um, the marriage of Father God with the people of Israel. I mean, how awesome is that? And so. Um, with God as the um, uh, bridegroom and the people of Israel as the bride and uh, the, the Torah um, really as the ketubah or marriage um, covenant and uh, Mount Sinai as the hoopah and many synagogues, particularly in Sephardic um, synagogues, decorate with a hoopah at this time of Shavuot. And uh, Moses is a matchmaker. <laughs> bringing the people to the beautiful um, wedding ceremony on Mount Sinai um, when the people made covenant um, with God. And uh, we know that 
we know that God appeared in such awesome majesty with the huge blowing of the shofar and thunder and lightning and everything. It was a bit of a frightening experience for the people. However, they knew the power of God. They saw the miracles coming out of Egypt um, to uh, Mount Sinai, the miracles of God. And so when it was put to them, you know, when God said, well, this is it. This is the covenant. This is my contract with you. And the people said, I do. Yes, Lord, we will serve you. Um, and okay, they have uh, fallen away at times and then reconnected. But you know what? When um, uh, in synagogues uh, each year, uh, Shavuot is a time of recommitting to God. Uh, the, the Ten Commandments are read out. And uh, the people say, yes, we agree, um, we recommit to God, we recommit to the Jewish way of life. So it's very special. And so this is an opportunity for us to recommit. I know you love the Lord, but Lord, I just pray for each one here, Lord, that we would just recommit our lives to you, even afresh this day, Lord, that we would just have a fresh um, surge of love for you, a fresh passion for you, a fresh desire um, to serve you every day, 24-7, Lord, even while we sleep, to rest in your presence. Lord, help us to just recommit afresh to you this day, we pray. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I've just got a little bit more to share. I'll just watch my time. <laughs> yes, I'm right. I've just got a bit more there. And so really you know that the homes are often decorated with greenery and um, people eat um, dairy products uh, like cheesecake um, symbolic of the land of milk and honey that the Lord brought them um, into so it's a joyous um, time but you know it's also a time of separation because when we have a look at it um, the second day of Sivan was a day of a distinction, it was called. It was on this day God called them a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, really setting them apart. And uh, it talks about that in Exodus 19, 5 to 6. The next three days, um, Sivan 3 to 5, um, was it called setting the boundary. And it was a day of enhanced uh, sanctity, Exodus 19, 12. So uh, they had to be physically clean. They had to be spiritually clean. They just had to just separate themselves from, from what they do daily and just wait upon the Lord. And so we see the same thing in the upper room when Jesus Yeshua um, said to his disciples, I want you to wait um, and, and until... Um, my father sends the Holy Spirit upon you and they waited 10 days they didn't know how long they might have to wait really he didn't say it's going to be 10 days otherwise they might have gone away and done something and come back on the ninth day but he just said wait separate yourselves wait and you know there were probably a lot more than 120 who were in the upper room um, but only 120 waited the 10 days and it wasn't just the disciples the Mary the mother of uh, Jesus was there and uh, other women were there as well and and they just prayed they waited they were obedient coming back to what Ken was um, saying earlier in communion about obedience uh, the, pe the people of Israel they were obedient um, when they received the Torah, uh, agreed to obey the Torah. Here we have the, um, the believers in Yeshua in the upper room. Um, they were obedient. They waited. They waited until the power from on high, the Holy Spirit, came upon them. How many of them said, oh, look, you know, I've got to look after my business or I've got a job to do or I've got to go and clean the house, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, those who waited, wow, what a gift they received from God. The gift of the Holy Spirit in tongues of flame. 
poured out upon them. How exciting was that? The power of God that came upon them. The power of God that changed them from being frightened, from being hiding, from um, being weak in their faith because they'd seen their leader, Yeshua, killed. But they had seen him resurrected as well. Nevertheless, they were frightened of the Jewish leaders. And the boldness that came upon them, the boldness in the upper room, the power of God that empowered them. And, you know, you have a look through Acts and you see um, the boldness upon the disciples. And, you know, we really need that in the church today. So, Lord, I just pray, release that boldness now, Lord. We just come against that spirit of fear that is over your church even um, throughout Australia, Lord, can talk to the complacency before. Yes, that is there too, Lord. And we just say, Lord, give us a passion. Give us boldness. Take away any fear, Lord, we pray. And let us just be um, mighty soldiers for you, we pray. Thank you, Lord. And so... Coming back to Pentecost again, just um, it's the new covenant. You know, we celebrate it. Talks about that in Jeremiah 31, 33, the, the covenant, the law, the Torah that is written on our hearts. And we just praise the Lord um, for that. And uh, it was fulfilling um, the wave offering of the loaves at Shavuot. And we know that the 3,000 redeemed um uh, they were like the first fruits. Amen. I mean, how awesome was that? So Judaism was born on Mount Sinai and Christianity was born on Mount Zion in Jerusalem at Pentecost. I mean, uh, how awesome, what a blessing. And uh, so we know that it tells us um, in uh, Hebrews 8, 6 that Yeshua, Jesus, is the mediator of a better um, covenant between God and man and we just praise the Lord for that um, you know we can go boldly to the throne of grace because of what Yeshua did with his death and resurrection on the cross and paying the price for our sins amen so I just want to um, look at a little bit more here um, so I want to turn to Acts 4.19. Let me go there. So when we have a look at Acts 4.19, um, what we have here is the, the disciples of um, Jesus, the, the Jewish authorities wanted to kill them um, for spreading the word about Jesus, Yeshua. Um, and... Uh, told them they couldn't do that they had to stop doing that they'd been jailed they were threatened with death but uh, Peter and John replied in uh, uh, Acts 4 19 do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him we cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard and they said sorry you might be in charge here but we obey a higher authority here we have been commissioned by god with the great commission to spread the word of god and it's god we're going to be obeying not man now this not was not a spirit of lawlessness obviously we don't want a spirit of lawlessness but this was saying you know we obey a higher authority you can jail us you can kill us you can taunt us, do what you like. But we know that we serve a God who is above all. And in the end, he will have the victory, whatever you do. And so uh, we have uh, verse 21. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without a starting a riot because that's, um, how big their following was for everyone was praising God um, for a miraculous sign of um, healing this is where they had healed the man at the gate beautiful um, and he had been lame for more than 40 years 
So when they were freed, they went back to the believers and they prayed for courage. And uh, I think we need to be praying for courage today because, you know, we have a lot of forces against us. And uh, so, I mean, even in Queensland right at the moment, there's euthanasia legislation before the parliament. We have legislation in Australia where um, it's okay to abort a child and even if they survive, you can kill them, even if they've survived. I mean, we have horrendous legislation in our nation right now and we need to be standing up for godly values. Amen. And so uh, we have here um, again Acts 4 and we're looking at uh, verse 25. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, So this is the, um, this is the believers um, praying. Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. This is what's happening right now. It's happened right through time, um, and it's still happening today. Down to verse 29. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus after this prayer the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they preached the word of God with what boldness <laughs> amen courage passion fearlessly and that's where we need to be we need to be preaching the word of God Boldly, fearlessly, with courage, with passion. And Lord, I just uh, release that now um, over your people, Lord, that you would renew our love for you, our first love, that you would um, fire us up like you did in the upper room. Fire us up, Lord. Fire us up, Lord, that we would have the passion, that we would have the courage, that we would have the boldness to share your word wherever you show us, Lord. Whatever comes against us, Lord, we say we know you have the victory, Lord. Give us signs, give us wonders, give us miracles, anoint our hands, anoint our hands for healing, anoint our hands for miracles, anoint our hands for signs and wonders that we will Push back the darkness, push back the darkness, push back the darkness and extend your kingdom, extend your kingdom, extend your kingdom. In Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm swapping now.